Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go straight to the military map review and to be more precise to the eastern side of Ukraine where the situation changed a little bit for today and not in favor of Ukraine because Russia pushes directly towards Bakhmut city on the eastern side. This city is very important since we have a very big crossroad over there. And let's go to the timeline. So it was uh, just yesterday, yeah, yesterday they moved a little bit closer also to Bahamut city over here they're very near to m03 road the fighting is ongoing over here and it's very close to Bahamut. i would say in a city itself let's measure how far are russians from the city center well seven kilometers nothing my friends and the city suburbans as you can see very close so as i think they could try to reach the city using h32 road over here but still we have the bridge around here so they cannot go to the city center anyways if we successfully destroy this bridge yeah i think i should use the red market to show you the direction of the russian attacks so here in the city the river is quite wide however on the north part of the city it's very thin or narrow i would say so russia could potentially perform the secondary attack towards Pidhorodne village and after that they will cross the river over here still i I think Russia is in lack of the forces to get the full city under their control in nearby future and we have our own reserves, Ukrainian reserves, coming to fight for Bakhmut in this area. They also receive more weapons. However, we have very huge front line all across Ukraine. So we need to take care about our territory, my friends. It's very hard to defend in some of the spots. This spot is very hard to be defended uh, by Ukrainian forces. However, so far russia cannot take the city and let's go a little bit to the south in donetsk area where russia took the part of Pisky village almost all Pisky was uh, taken recently and russia claimed about this stuff uh, why is it important because ukraine was building uh, the huge defense line across this territory with unrecognized Donetsk Republic and Russia finally penetrated the defense. Defense is ongoing somewhere here, I would say near to Pisky. It was very hard for them to attack this village and they tried it in the beginning of the war but recently Russia got some of the success in this area and it was like that three days ago and we see today it is like that. So they took almost all the village here and the main goal is to now go across this defense line to this road M03 that goes across the front line and basically they can use this road to go a west side and also connect their army to this area and attack our forces from behind I would say. Avdivka is also under constant Russian attack however this is kind of town much bigger than Pisky and so far Russia cannot uh, do anything with Avdivka. Mostly in Pisky, Avdivka and Marinka they have the private military campaign Wagner that fights uh, for Russian Federation. They are better equipped, they have more ammunition and they have fighting experience however we find them hard and they continue to lose many men. Just imagine they start their attack in the most protected area. Ukraine was building the defense side here for a very long time and they decided just to go straight away. So obviously they have significant losses but not gaining huge uh, parts of the land. Yes, they took the vast part of the Pisky but they are struggling for what they are losing, my friends. This attack from Russian side is nonsense. I think all this war from Russian side is nonsense and now because of this attack from the Netsk region they are losing around 500 men per day and yes the most losses they have in this area it's the politician decision from the general command of russian federation to attack Donetsk Oblast to get it under control. Why not to attack on Kherson or Zaporizhia? The place there is much less protected compared to the eastern side of Ukraine, but probably they want to lose many men or they just don't, don't care about their losses. Let's go, my friends, to Izum direction for Ukrainian counterattack. So we 
we're attacking this area very close to Izum over here. So I'm just going to show you. We attack over here, over here. And the good thing that we took Bagarodishna back under Ukrainian control, it was done very fast compared to Russian attacks. However, Russia also pushed a little bit from the north. They took Dovhanke village. And now the situation is mostly standstill for this area. We are not expediting this attack on Izum. However, I think in the future we're gonna go and take this very important city. And let's see the picture in general. I'll turn on the fire detection. You can see the fighting is ongoing near to the front lines. Those could be wildfires, but it was reported that Melitopol and Novokhovka was under attack by Ukrainian forces. So probably again we targeted the ammunition depots and together with the command centers over there. Here zone is still okay. Russia is unable to put their Panton bridge near to Antonovsky bridge because the current there is very strong. And for Antonovsky bridge, my friends, it seems like it's totally unusable for any kind of vehicles. We also targeted uh, this area near to Novokhovka, uh, the Novokhovka dam, but the territory uh, far from the dam so around here we targeted precisely very precisely but russia still is able to send small vehicles across uh, this bridge so i think in future we're also gonna destroy this part that connects uh, novakahovka with this northern part of ukraine my friends now let's go to some of the news and events great we have the self-propelled artillery susanna to deliver to ukraine from slovakia awesome thank you slovakia for your great help this is very important weapon for our armed forces the range for this artillery is up to 41 kilometers which is quite a lot also as german made panzer habitzer 2000 this system has ability to fire many shells across the ballistic trajectory to hit the target with many shells at one time this picture came from Novakhovka, russian controlled territory temporary so we fired to their ammunition depot once again destroying it interesting news coming russian military command is leaving this area in her zone because uh, this area just been cut and still they have some of the ferries across uh, this river so they are trying to flee this territory because probably Ukraine is still gonna perform the counter-attack maybe not this month but next month we're gonna see it in the future my friends anyway and today we targeted Nova Troitsky quite far away from the front lines 131 kilometers and I think we don't have uh, any kind of weapons uh, that can target this area far away from the front lines could be Toshka U who knows all right remember the information about slovakian mix we have now confirmed information that they're gonna send those airplanes to ukraine but not this month the next one so still they need to negotiate with the czech republic and the sky protection of slovakia and etc et so those airplanes are being ready to deliver to ukraine and we hope to see them in nearby future right about the airfield in crimea pentagon said that they think ukraine is responsible for that attack it's awesome however they also say that the united states of america haven't supplied to ukraine any kind of weapons that could potentially target this airfield quite far away from the front lines so they think that ukraine used some kind of weapons still and so far no one knows what that weapon is interesting our intelligence say that russia starts to mobilize their resources to build new military machines for this war it means they want to play in the long term for the long term perspective um i don't think they're gonna win it because they have many western made parts installed on their military vehicles and we saw them in this war and without that part they cannot uh, effectively uh, fight in this war and on the other hand ukraine has supplies of the brand new very precise and devastating weapons to our army so obviously we're gonna find them back very effectively this is a short video of mig 29 mostly ukrainian air forces very awesome looking nimble maneuverable airplane 
I would like to fly it. Also, we have Su-25s, Su-24s and Su-27s and many of the helicopters. My friends, I would like to join uh, that position, but without the military experience, I cannot do it. And still, we have many of the pilots in Ukrainian Air Forces, but in lack of the airplanes. So we are still waiting for the Western-made airplanes to be delivered to Ukraine as F-16, F-18, F-15 and A-10s. My friends, this is awesome job and I would like to fly again no matter on what airplane. This is awesome. My friends, if you like what I do, just press the like button. And also there are many ways how you can support my channel just on Patreon, PayPal or Donatello, whichever you like. All of that you may find in the video description just below. My friends who support me, you are awesome. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are. Have a great time. Yeah, this job is really awesome.